We're going to go through a few steps of installing the third man seat in the uh, Sprinter 2007 model year and up. Uh, the seat is a neat little seat that goes between the driver and passenger seat to carry a third person. And the installation is pretty straightforward. We're going to take you through the steps uh, right now. First order of business is to uh, uh, pull off the cover that's on the emergency brake. Very, very simple. Pull it away and then back. And it comes right off. We've taken the uh, time to mark this yellow mark uh, where you're going to cut. This little piece has to come out. Uh, you'll see why uh, um, when we put the bracket on. But inside here, there's a, uh, a little plastic lip that you can follow that and go around right to this crest. And this piece will be discarded. It's going to come out. Uh, the other thing that we've done prior to starting the video was mark these holes from the bottom of the sprinter up. Get a piece of cardboard, uh, lay down under there, and you're going to see two uh, about an inch diameter circular uh, a tape that's c uh, covering these holes in the metal under the mat. These holes exist already, and you're going to punch through them with an awl like we did here. We left it in here for clarity, and we drilled through the rubber with a hole saw. Uh, it's a one inch diameter hole. Uh, if we have our own special hole saw that we made, but if you have a hole saw at home, you can uh, run that mark from the bottom up first, and then take the uh, hole saw and run it backwards in your drill, and be careful not to uh, uh, scar the steel. Just run backwards so you go through the mat, you'll kind of hear it uh, hit steel and then stop and pull a little plug out. You're going to end up with a, with a hole of two one-inch holes in the rubber floor mat only. Uh, also in the back you see that we marked uh, where the rubber mat is going to be cut. This piece right here is going to be discarded. There's a bracket that goes in place of this uh, rubber mat and uh, the question is where do you start cutting? It's uh, really quite simple. There's an indentation right on the side of the seat pedestal, both sides. If you use that, inst that indentation, we took a, a grease pencil and marked it black so you can see it for clarity. This little indentation exists on both sides. You put a piece of painter's tape or use a straight edge and make a mark and then cut that right across. And what you'll end up with is the exposed seat holes, uh, seat mount holes, which we already took the bolts out of, but they were in there. You're going to take these out and set them aside. You're going to use them again and, and back behind the seat take the other ones out too so you could because you're going to be able to you have to lift the seat up to slide the bracket underneath right above the drive shaft directly under the driver compartment is uh, where you're going to poke the awl through the floor right here you can see these little they're like a tape disc that hides the existing holes from sprinter and you're going to be pushing the awl up through there right through the mat if you have somebody hold the mat down while you're pressing this up uh, it'll help a little bit now we're putting in the rear main bracket uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt the seats forward a little bit. Uh, having some help to do this uh, for a moment is, uh, is a big help. Uh, and we're going to slide this bracket under the feet of the existing seats. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm going to slide them under like that. I got help, so it's easy for me. And then we're going to put the bolts back in the holes. Okay, we can center that and thread them in. Now, you got to be careful when you put these in. You want to make sure you're not going to cross-thread these bolts. Finger tight. Just start them by finger, make sure they're free floating. If they're not, just move this bracket around until they are. Then you're going to take the front bracket and you're going to drop these holes that you cut inside this mat. They're kind of deep, so that's why we have these spacers. You drop them in. And we're going to go underneath and we're going to put the nuts on those. The rest of the hardware for the front mount uh, consists of uh, two flat washers uh, and two uh, nylock nuts, nuts that are going to go in fr on from underneath. I'm going to leave them loose enough so when we put the uh, upper brackets in, if we have to jiggle them around a little bit to get them to line up, that we, uh, we can. All right, uh, so we put these um, uh, bolts back into holes. We were careful about it. Again, cross-threading these bolts is very easy. It helps to have two people push on the seats and tilt them a little bit so you can orient this bracket so that the bolts will thread in with your fingers. You don't want to put a tool to those and tighten them if they're cross-threaded. And don't forget, you got to put the, tool, the uh, bolts back in the rear uh, outer mounts too. The same thing applies. Do them by hand. Once you feel them, engage the threads, and then you can tighten them. Now it's time for the uh, e-brake to be removed from the bracket. We're going to take a, uh, a relocation bracket that we made, and it's going to drop the uh, e-brake uh, lever down and move it inboard. There's some wires that are connected to the e-brake 
You're going to pull the little uh, tab that holds the e-brake wires to the bracket. Carefully pull that off and then it, there's no stress at all. Put the bolts in, the shouldered bolts go in from the back like that with washers. And then the thick spacers go on. And the bracket goes on this way. You're going to put the washers on and the nylock nuts finger tight. I'm going to put the original bolts back in. Tighten them down. Now when e-brake is properly installed, you want this at rest, you want the e-brake to be sitting above the rubber mat. Right now it's kind of touching, we're going to adjust that. So let me change this, we're going to snug the first um, uh, bolt, because this one's on a slot, it got a little bit of play. I'm going to snug it, but not tighten it all the way. Okay, e brake still a little close. You can take this and you can rotate just a little bit. You want about a finger's thickness through there. So right now we're perfect. E-brake is at rest. It's just above. And we're going to tighten it up. Perfect. Okay, now it's time for the upper brackets. The upper brackets slide right in between the front and the rear bracket. Just like that. And then you're going to put your half inch hardware through it. I'm going to put another washer on the back side. And the same goes for the other three locations, in the front and in the back. Now that we've uh, put the uh, upper brackets in uh, with the nuts and bolts, they're not jacked down tight. There's still a little movement left in them because you may need that to line the seatbelt bar up. The seatbelt bar has the seatbelt pre-attached with the bracket allowing the seatbelt fabric to go forward. We pre-assembled uh, 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 the uh, uh, pedestal tabs. These are going to rest against the back of the pedestal. There's a little rubber uh, uh, protector on each one. And that goes back here. And these, we get nuts and bolts in these holes here. We're going to put them in and we're going to snug these brackets up against the back of the seat pedestal. Okay, we just finished tightening all the heavy bolts. All the half inch bolts are tightened. Um, and now we're going to adjust the pedestal tab. So we're going to tighten up these pedestal tabs. Push it against the back of the pedestal and tighten them up. With the brackets all pretty much installed, well, definitely installed, we're going to concern ourselves with putting the cover back on the uh, e-brake uh, mechanism. Uh, make sure uh, that you're, you set it uh, like you said it before, just check it. You got a little bit of room when the e-brake is relaxed. Uh, it's not touching the floor. In this case, uh, it's exactly what we want. And when you put this cover back on, there's a little groove in the piece you took off that lines up to this. It's like a tongue and groove. There's and then we push the tab in. Everything lines up nicely. Here's your cut. Clears your bracket. Everything is looking just like it should. All right, the last uh, piece of this operation is dropping the third man seat in place. We just dropped it right in, the holes lined up. We use the um, um, uh, 3 8 uh, nuts and bolts. There's a washer on both sides. There's a nut, of course, underneath. Uh, and all you got to do is whack them down, put, put the slider rearward. It's gonna, if you have a partition in your vehicle, you're going to want to keep it about a quarter of an inch away so it doesn't rattle. Um, 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 and we've spaced it between the armrests. You have a little bit of room either way. Now the other thing too is we have seat belts attached here, a lap type seat belt. There's a little loop on the side of the seat that the uh, seat belt goes through so it doesn't fall down and you have a hard time retrieving it later. And all you gotta do now is chuck in the little map pocket that goes under the seat. And then drop the seat cushion. Now if you want to fold this down into a, uh, a console with the cup holders exposed, uh, it's done so by pulling on this little ring on the side, which releases. And the there's another map pocket on top. And when you put it back up, it locks into place. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for visiting SprinterWorld.com.